Hey guys, uh, welcome back to, uh, I guess this is episode two of new horror review time. I don't know. Um, it's, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not even October yet, and I'm already filming some of these. I don't know what I'm gonna call this series yet. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, the movie that we're gonna be talking about this time is, uh, definitely, definitely very, very different. Um, Spring. Wow. Why do I always have so much trouble? There we go. Spring. Um, this was a movie that was actually sent to us by a friend of ours, uh, Spencer. Um, my brother's best friend, uh, good friend of mine. We've known him for quite a while. And this is one of the this is one of the ones that he sent us. He he goes and sees. He's able to go and see a lot of uh, a lot of indie movies. Um, he's as big a fan of horror movies as I am. Possibly bigger, maybe not. Just different. Um, and he sent this to us because we he he thought we would like it. And it was one that I chose. And it's kind of weird that I chose this one uh, as my second one, especially. You know, when I did Tusk for my first one, which was had some body horror elements to it, and transformation type elements, and so did this one. Um, I'm going to be honest, I loved this movie. I mean, just absolutely loved this movie. It was amazing. It had... Beautiful cinematography. Um, it had a very <coughs> sorry. It had a great environment to it. Um, I, the storyline was simple yet compelling. Um, the acting was, for the most part, very good. Um, for the most part, the acting was very very good. But most important. Um, Well, God, well, how, how do I put this? Uh, it reminded me of, it reminded me a lot of one of my personal, a, a movie that's one of my favorite movies ever. It, um, it, it is not in my top five, but it would probably be number six. And that is Let the Right One In, um, which is just a fantastic story, a fantastic movie, a great book. And this had so many elements of that story in it. Um, same kind of storyline. This is basically what would happen if they, if instead of kids, they had had early 20-somethings and let the right one in. This is what it would be. It is a story, it is a love story about a man who, a young man who falls in love with this beautiful girl that he meets in Italy who, you know, is more than she seems and turns out that she's an immortal weird monster thing um that was one of the only things that i kind of had an issue with in this movie um that they didn't really explain what she was but the right went in the little girl's vampire playing it out um but they didn't really explain what she was she was just this weird thing there was a lot of science a lot of um a lot of biology, a lot of biophysiology type stuff, and I, I honestly I didn't get it all. Um, I but maybe I wasn't supposed to. Maybe that was the point. Is that they just threw a lot of science at it to make it seem like it was something more than it was because they just didn't know how to explain it correctly themselves. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. That's not really important. What's important is the idea. It's a simple idea of a human falling in love with a monster. Um, that is, that's something that has always fascinated me. It's something that I wish more um, movies would do. But at the same time, I'm glad that they don't. Because that's something that, if it's done well, then it's a great story. And it's a very compelling story. Especially like in something like this. This was well done. Especially because he didn't know what he was dealing with up until the end. Um, and the fact that they made it a very short story. Like this takes place basically in a week. This entire movie. 
Um, they kept it short, they kept it to the point, and it worked in that sense. Whew. Um, sorry, I... Okay, um, the, uh, the tagline for this movie is, love is a monster, and the little quote that they have up uh, at the top of this DVD says, stunning, a monster movie disguised as a love story, and that is a very accurate way of putting this. Um, the love story is great, it's powerful. It's compelling. Um, the monster movie aspect of it is only important in the sense that she is afraid that that is going to ruin what they have built up between themselves. And in that sense, it works. Instead of being a... It, there's so much about this movie that was confusing when I got to the end, trying to explain everything. Um, at the end, the fact that she became a monster was actually very, very important. You know, there's a choice that had to be made between immortality and staying with him and all this stuff. But all in all, the fact that she turns into a monster is only important in the sense that it's the one thing that's holding her back from the relationship. So in that sense, it was just kind of a basic... In a lot of senses, it was kind of a basic MacGuffin, but it was an interesting one. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I'm saying, I seem to be saying a lot about this movie without really saying much about it. It's just one of those movies you have to see and experience. Highly, highly, highly recommend uh, this one. Uh, if you see it somewhere for cheap, uh, highly recommend picking up. Uh, it's worth a buy. It's definitely worth a watch. It's interesting, it's beautiful. Um, this is the kind of movie that I really like. Again, I don't know, know that I would necessarily consider this a horror movie. I actually really don't. I don't in the same sense that I don't consider uh, Let the Right One In a horror story. Even though this one deals with a monster which falls under my personal purview for a horror movie. Let the Right One In deals with a vampire which again falls under it. Um, I just, I don't consider these kind of movies true horror movies, but it doesn't matter. It's a good movie. It's a great movie. It has horror elements in it. It has mystery in it. Um, it has, it has compelling backstory. It has a compelling reason to watch it. It has a great love story. Uh, the lead girl in it, Nadia Helker, is beautiful. Just Stunningly beautiful. Um, it has a great atmosphere. It's beautiful. It's shot in Italy. I mean, you can't get much better than that. And it has that feel of an indie movie that has just the right amount of budget to make it still look very indie, but look high-end. Uh, you know, it's not polished like a AAA release of a movie, like a AAA release movie. It's not highly polished. It's still a little bit rough, but it has that beautiful sense of atmosphere and cinematography that I just love in movies. It's one of the reasons why I like foreign movies so much, to be honest. Um, but again, just, just find it and watch it. It's really great.